As always, this episode of the 1878 FM podcast is sponsored by Green King Sport, where football is more than a game. The league is entering the business end and Green King Sport venues are showing every single televised Everton fixture over the running. With more than 900 sports pubs across the UK, it doesn't matter where you're based, you can catch every single minute of the action. Football's best enjoyed with your mates, so if you're not at the ground this month, get a text in a group chat and head to your local Green King Sport venue to catch the game. Don't forget to download the Green King Sports app to enjoy exclusive competitions and discounts whenever there's a game. Welcome to the 1878 FM podcast. Myself, Pet, and Sam is back. Sam Avery is back with us. Sam, how are you? I'm good, thanks, fellas. Thanks for having me on. It's it's interesting that obviously me and David here play by the same actor. <laughs> Absolutely. The same room the same I know. We, we were supposed to have the four of uh, this week. It's going to be the first time we got a four, mm. and then sadly, family emergency. Sadly, sadly, Dave had to drop out. I was like, oh, yeah, so close, so close. It is. It'll happen. It'll happen. Yeah. It, there's there's a willingness, like a contract. There's yeah. a willingness on both sides yeah. to do the deal. Yeah. We it just, just feels like it. the audience is being cheated. Yeah, that I feel so, but listen. Oh, so yeah, but that that first Avengers film, you, mm. you had to you had to earn that. Didn't yeah, you? exactly. You yeah, exactly. It. You know, you get there. You've got to. We just have to go through what we go through, and it will happen. Trust me. Trust me. <laughs> It'll happen. Um, when we recorded last week yeah. the podcast, we finished the tidied it all yeah. up. Went about our business doing something else, and uh, the news broke that Everton were given some points back. So let's just quickly discuss that. Me and you have done so. Yeah. Go to Sam first. Sam, I mean, ten points taken off, four points given back, but there's obviously the threat of more points being taken. So, uh, what's your take on this uh, up and downness of Premier League points? Well, both times when we had the points taken off and then the the four points given back, both times I've been in the middle of something where I've had to have my phone on airplane mode. Right. I've turned it on and it's just exploded. And <laughs> my first thing is like, oh my God, like a family like relative has had a horrendous incident or something. Oh God. I just feel that way in mm. a way. But obviously last Monday was better news than when the 10 points got taken away. But it 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 still doesn't really feel like everything adds up and it doesn't feel like the kind of the work and out that we've been told doesn't seem to align with their own rules, if there are rules, because everything's so hidden, not as transparent. Everyone's kind of confused about how they've come up with those figures. Mm. I think we talked about last time I was on. Yeah. But you've then got the the kind of the idea that Forest might lose points, mm. but then the idea that we might lose more points. If Forest lose, do they appeal? Do they get some back? If we lose more, do we then appeal and get them back? Or does this first appeal and the, you know, points that we got given back change the next deduction it, it just yeah. my brain is like constantly on about five different timelines of where yeah, it yeah. be, and it's it's exhausting because all i want to really do is watch the footy <laughs> and cheer the team on and we can get on to how difficult that is on its own as well mm. but it's uh yeah it, it what's really interesting is when you get a lot of pundits on on sky talking about the points deduction and you get people like Jamie Carragher saying it felt like six points. Mm. That, well, like, like what, how? What? What? What basis? Like, at least give us your work and out. You've got him and Gary Neville, both of them talking about how it's not fair because points are getting taken out, points are getting given back. But at no, at no point did he dare to say it's a farce because obviously Sky is so much in bed with the Premier League. Mm. There's just a real lack of willingness to to call it for what it is, which is just badly managed yeah. article and and doesn't seem to make sense yeah absolutely i mean I, monday was when the points come back and at first you're obviously like well we've moved up a few places so it felt all right but then as the week went on it was i was getting more uncomfortable with it to be honest sam i was thinking actually no i'm not happy with four because i still don't know where where six come from do you know what i mean we, we, they give us four back and the only thing anyone's ever been able to explain to me is, well, the other the other commission give you 10. Mm. And then this commission listened to arguments from Everton and said, yeah, actually, 
based on those arguments, that's worth four points going back. Well, where did the six come from then? Like, like what have we done that is worthy of six points? Because it still isn't a final figure that if you breach, it's six points. So I still don't know wh- how. And I, I am, you know, I'm doing the overlap this week with Jamie Carragher. So we'll be asking him why six points felt right. How? Why? In what way? Did six points feel right? Do you know what yeah. I mean? It's not as if Everton spent a hundred million on a player and you looked at them and well, you know, you look what you've done quite clearly here. You've breached this thing and that because there's no hard and fast rules for this. That's been an issue, certainly for me. It feels like how I parent my own children sometimes, which <laughs> is like they'll do one thing and they'll get punishment X, and then they'll do something else and they'll get the full weight of. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I remember threatening to like throw all the toys in the bin because of something, a real misdemeanor and, and big things. I sometimes go, I'll look the other way because to be honest, I, I want to keep the peace. So it's, <laughs> and if they ask me to actually come out with, if, if you know, as a parent, what's your like, point, like, Sally? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Richard Masters and, and ask to explain what had gone on, I would look maybe not quite as stupid as him, <laughs> mm, mm. but not far off because. Yeah. It, I, you know, there's no logic, but that's fine because that's that's what parenting is. This is different. Mm. This is a this is a you know a, a sporting competition where transparency is key, integrity is key. Mm. Integrity is kind of dripping out the game gradually every season anyway, or yeah, it yeah. feels that way to me. Yeah, and you've got you know the teams at the top doing what they want, the teams below them kind of hands are tied, glass ceilings are put in place, mm. and uh, it, you know. It, the, the longer it goes on, the, the less you feel that it's fair. And if you don't feel like it's fair, you're then watching it with a completely different mindset. Yeah. And you're not really watching it in a way that, even in the 90s when I started going to the match, mm. it felt like it wasn't fair in a way that we didn't have any money and other teams had money. But even that was, I don't know, you, you could kind of get your head around that sort of level playing yeah. field. But now yeah. it's like it's gone to the next level. But where the, the dream, Sam, was always... Um, Sadly, it never worked out like the dream. But the, the dream was, like Sam just said there, it felt a bit unfair because we didn't have money, but the dream was, well, if we if we can mm. attract someone with money, then that will be us. But even that now, even that doesn't matter. You've got, no. you know, forget about Evan for one second. Villa and Newcastle are wealthy. Newcastle incredibly wealthy. And they're talking about having to sell mm. one of their top players this summer to fall in line with this yeah. set of rules that seemingly... The top six don't have to fall. Yeah, I think, I think we all we know all that, don't we? And we've done that to death. And I think the game's just going in a really bad direction. And it, I think it's the whole, just the whole thing for me. It's just like, yeah, you, like you've just mentioned here. Yeah. It was almost like we'll give them four back to just make them feel a bit happy about it. Maybe they'll shut up and go away. And mm. maybe, you know, maybe they'll come into the next one now thinking, well, if we give them... If we give them a couple of points, they'll be happy and they won't appeal it and they won't I, I just find it all a bit weird and and again it's like when you hear other people talking about it, it's just like I heard I heard Paul Mason talking about it on Saturday and he was saying um he was going mad about it and he was like, Yeah, it's gonna it's terrible that um if it when it goes to appeal it'll happen after the end of the season and therefore um uh, if Forrest get points, they won't get them till next season. It's like, what are you talking about? Like, even the media don't know what they're talking about, or certain members of the media don't know what they're talking about. It's like, and I, I don't know whether he was corrected or not, but I know where Sky pulled down the social the social video of it. And it's like, there's so many different stories and bad narratives running because we've just let this thing run away from itself. And I'm not happy that we got four points back by any means. I'm really not, because as Sam said there, it's like, show me what show me what you're working out is. Show me how you got to the 10 points in the first place before we go to giving us uh, six points. Because this is huge. This can have, this will affect us. It'll affect Forrest. And now a lot of other clubs are piping up and saying, need, this needs sorting out. You know, we've heard Brentford and a couple of others saying, this needs sorted out. This is affecting the whole league uh, by not... Um, by not knowing what's going to happen, maybe till after the end of the season, and there'll be a lot of pressure, I think, when this next one comes in for Everton and Forest not to appeal. And I wonder whether that'll have any bearing on the outcome of those two ones now, just mm. on the outcome of what what's given. I mean, we've been told, which again, stupidly, there's supposed to be a precedent set, but apparently they're saying we're not going to have suspended uh, points because that when when do you hand that out? So. 
they're going against their own logic because that they have been handed out before in the in the EFL. So they're saying on one hand, well, we're following what's happened in the EFL, but they're taking it away by not having suspended ones. So this the pressure now of not giving out maybe harsh punishments um, that lead to something appeals happening after the season's finished. You got to put all that. That's that's not football, is it? That's ridiculous. Mm. That's that's um, that's just adding something silly, which really should. You talked about the the kind of the media narrative getting out of, you know, getting out the box, mm. and then you know what's the old, what's that old quote about the what, a lie goes around the world before the truth has got to choose on or something. It's that's like, the quote. That's, I mean, that's exactly that's the, the quote. quote yeah, something like that. It's people like putting the, you know, people who don't know what they're talking about speculating. Yeah, that's mm. probably we would on other clubs' affairs that we're yeah, not yeah. familiar with. You know, and we've all become sort of semi-legal experts over the last <laughs> six, six months, probably probably a bit longer. But where's the voice from Everton Football yeah. Club? Where's the voice keeping this in the media and keeping this on people's agendas and also setting out the proper facts when people are discussing this case? Because that doesn't seem to be happening at all. The only people pushing it are people like yourselves. And then in the public, you know, in the sort of non-Evertonian sphere, you've got Andy Burnham who's doing mm. what he can. But he's a politician, and I'm sure he's got bigger things to be thinking about. So he probably should have. But he, I mean, he's at least he's he seems willing to be um, talking about it in a way that's from a kind of, uh, of course, biased Evertonian view, but mm. from a sort of slightly different perspective. But wh- where's the where's the ex players from Everton? There's, mm. there's, I mean, we don't really have high profile ex players who've won trophies, unfortunately, who are like yeah. super media friendly, like a lot of clubs do. But yeah, even it, that seems like a, a big missed opportunity, not just for this case, but for pushing the, the club's kind of PR in general. That yeah. should be something that's part of the business plan and part of the kind of ongoing conversation with the club. Yeah, I, I 100% agree. And we've spoke about this before, about about it, there not being out, anyone out there shouting. Like, even last Monday, you know, Baz just mentioned it there about Carragher. Carragher gets asked on Monday Night Football where they've got like literally an hour and a half to talk about anything but the actual game that's on that night. Um, and I think they addressed it for about two minutes, if that, and then basically just wanted to talk about, you know, the cup final the day before, which, you know, because cause obviously Liverpool have won it. And yet you would have think that would have thought that was the biggest talking point of the day and could have had someone brought in, even if it was just over, um, you know, on, on a on a Skype situation or whatever and, and just spoke to someone to just get their point of view from an Everton angle. But... Like you said, everyone everyone talks around us. You know, Rooney Wayne Rooney was on uh, the Overlap sh- show last week, and there's someone who's got very close links to Everton, had been uh, at a club that had had point, a point deduction as a manager, so knows both sides of it, and yet wasn't even asked about the situation once. And like it's, I know it's we what we want everyone to talk about it, but this does seem like a really important moment for football to get right. And yeah, and it could massively affect, like we said, at the end of the season, mm. the last day of the season could be massively affected. And yet nobody's really wanting to talk about it. It's something that comes and goes. And for the Premier League, that's fine. That's exactly what they want. They don't want this to be a big story. And we don't want it to be a big story. No. We don't want to be talking about it all the time. It's massively boring. Um, but yeah, I don't know. And, I, and I'm sure Everton's hands are tied with, with they'll say, legally. But... You can still have you can still have somebody out there who can be doing all that work for you, um, and God, yeah, it's difficult. Really, it's a real difficult one, and we're just gonna have to put make as much noise as we can ourselves. I think. On to, I mean, something that'd make it almost irrelevant would be if Everton could actually win games of football. Yeah. Sam and Saturday presented it. No, but it would, wouldn't it? We had Crystal yeah. Palace at home and West Ham at home, and but in both games. The opposition were there for the taking in both games. And, you know, we had to come from behind against Palace. But on Saturday, after a dreadful first half from two very poor sides, the second half, we got in front. And the game was there, you know. Dwight McNeil's missed an open goal for 2-0. Some other poor decisions from players in the final third. But we end up losing the game that we should never, you know, we should never be in a position to lose the game, in my opinion. And we just look, I don't know. This manager once had a pop at Everton and said they don't know how to win a game. It looks like when he was the Burnley manager, well, he seems to have exactly the same issue now. He's the Everton manager. Ten games without a win. And 
you come out of it, walk out of Goodison on Saturday, think, and I, I don't know when we'll win another game because if you can't beat a team that are there for the taking when you win them 1 0, there is big problems right now. Seems like anyway. Yeah, it was it was mad, wasn't it? It was just mm. it, how many times have we seen that game as well? Like mm. not just in the last couple of years, but like in the last I don't know thirty years that I've been watching Everton. Mm. You know, a couple of late goals at the park end. It's yeah. always the park. It's end. always the park. And obviously, we tend to kick the other way in the second half, but it's just always <laughs> that. Whoever sits in the park end, I just feel for them all the time, and the, you can always just see them just flipping the, the middle finger up at whatever <laughs> season. Opposition team yeah. scorers just like doing the knee slide over to the away fans, and it's yeah. just the second goal went in. Their, their second goal went in, um, and I just thought that's it, that's mm. it. And the, the third goal, it kind of you know it was irrelevant. Yeah, yeah, we didn't look like we were going to score, but the, to get in front at home against the team who, you know, it's not like they were firing on all cylinders. No. West Ham, they were they were kind of it was, it was such a nothing game, and. Their equaliser was actually, I thought, from in terms of like header goals from a corner, it, it, it was a really good header, mm-hmm. um, and and it was a really good delivery. And sometimes you got to go, okay, fair enough, let's just crack on and try and you know keep the momentum on. There was a little bit more like momentum from Everton in terms of like getting the ball and keeping it in their half, but we never really looked like we knew what to do with it. No. And it just it, that kind of that momentum that you build up over time. That's how you get. Defenders making mistakes where you yeah. just kind of they, they clear the lines, but mm. it comes back. It comes yeah, back yeah, yeah. Which is why teams like City and Liverpool score late goals because there's only so long you can put up with that. For we weren't at that level in any way, but we we were at least keeping it in terms of the possession a little bit more. Um, but some of the crossing was 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 so bad. Yeah. I mean, there was a great cross for the goal. The yeah, it was a brilliant in. ball. Yeah, a lot of the crossing was just it, it, you know struggling to beat the first man. It was just a lot of like a, a lack of pace going forward, and then you know the final whistle goes, and you think we've lost again, mm-hmm. we've lost again, and I think we've we've now been conditioned as Everton fans for so long to almost expect and and be resigned to that, and that's a big part of the problem, I think, because mm-hmm. there's a lack of culpability from from the players to each other, but from the fans to the team, there's also a kind of a resignation that well, that's just what Everton do. We just we lose. You know, we concede late goals at the park end, and it, it, what, how do we turn that around? I mean, obviously, results on the pitch—that's the starting point. Do we, do, do we have some kind of like motivational TED talk before the, the, <laughs> the start? And you know, rather than Zed cars, get someone coming out. Get the, who, who's that big, tall American fella? Get him coming out about you know, adjusting your mindset. But it was—I had to mm-hmm. get in the car and drive to Leeds to do a gig. No. And I was just—I was—I was just. I was just in such a bad mood and yeah. I was trying to con- convince myself, okay, this is no good. I can't go and do this gig with this mindset. So I was just saying, right, it's okay. It's just a game of footy. It doesn't matter. And I was just driving. I was listening to music and I was thinking, that's okay. But all I could think of was all my mates who were Everton fans, all my family who were Everton fans. I knew I was coming on this show, so I was thinking of you too. <laughs> At one point, Dave Vitti popped into my head. <laughs> and I'm driving and I'm th- and then I had this weird daydream where, you know, the, this is a real Star Wars reference, but at the end of uh, Sky, uh, episode nine, The Force Awakens, Rey Skywalker's fighting Emperor Palpatine and all the Jedi who've been before her are all speaking to her. And I just had all my dead relatives in my head going, that was shite. <laughs> <laughs> and it was horrible. So uh, I just I just don't know what we're gonna do. Will XG ever pay us back? That's my question. Oh God, XG's that lad that you knew when you were a kid, isn't he? Remember, there's someone who borrowed a fiver off you once, and you still think about it now. Go, I wonder where he is with my fiver. The prick. That's XG. It's never ever paying you. And you knew, you knew when you're given the fiver, you were never seeing that fiver ever again, ever yeah. again. And it's 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 took they took her away from us. The little prick. Um, no, what you know? What we've you know? It's great again. Some of the we've we've been given four points back and pissed five up up the wall in a week. The Brighton in this game should have been two wins. Should have been two wins. That's five points. That would have been thirty points. We'd be sitting pretty now. We'd be safe. Mm. We'd be safe. If we'd won those two games, yeah. and we have conspired to um, to lo- to lose on Saturday. And I don't know. I don't know. I walked out that game. I didn't know who to blame. I was just in like. I was just in shock. 
at it, to be honest. I didn't know who to blame. I was like, you know, your first Paul to call is you want to blame the manager. But I was just like, oh. ultimately, the players not putting the ball in the back of the net are the ones who have cost us, haven't they? You know, McNeil at 2-0. They had to make it 2-0. Um, other opportunities during the game that should have just had them done and dusted. And we've allowed them to go up the other end of the pitch and get, you know, the first goal. Yeah, it's a good header, but... It's 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 soft just to get there and the second one, you know, it's a lazy it's a lazy attempt to block a cross and it's a great finish. But you're standing there just shaking on how on earth have we not won this game? And yeah, it's just it, it, it yeah. You just de- I'm always like, who can I blame? But I was just like, I don't I don't know. I don't know. You know, the subs were late. Could we have done that a bit early? But then you look at the bench and I just you just but it's Everton. It's just, it's just, it's just Everton, and, and and we've done it again. And um, we could be sitting here very, very comfortable, very, very, very comfortable with uh, looking at the, the the next set of fixtures, thinking, yeah, we we we'd be all right. But again, you're looking at you're waiting for the Luton game, and you, God, Luca Dean pops up and becomes an you know as an Everton hero once again, mm. and that, and that's that's desperate, isn't it? That is absolutely desperate. That was that was sitting here. Looking at Luke. made up Bournemouth one yesterday, yeah, and we should have been hoping for a draw or yeah. looking at Burnley to get something because Bournemouth are three points ahead yeah. of us, and you're like, that's Burnley relegated. Like, Burnley yeah, is well, gone that's, now. That's They're done. Yeah, yeah. They're done, but it, it shouldn't be like this. And you know, it. it I don't. I, I don't know. I. I just think any manager that can't win a game. In oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Win. I think he took better off at a ridiculous time when the fella was affecting the game so much. Had just scored and was looking like he was going to get another goal and he took him off to put Tom on. He thought it was rubbish when he come on. Um, and just things like that. But the players, uh, I don't know. I don't know because other managers have, have, you know, why is it like it's like why was it Lampard's fault when we couldn't win, and yet Lampard never went ten games without a win? Mm. Why was it Benitez's fault when we couldn't win, but it's not this manager's fault? Conversely, with that, how can the players not take responsibility mm. for this? And I'm not saying they aren't, but I mean, like you just said, we Dwight McNeil's got the whole goal to aim at, and he kicks it. The only place the goalie is for two 0 and why is Jack Harrison crossing? Why is he rushing crosses when he had loads of time? How you know, mm. you can just go on, can't you? That where's our goalkeeper off corners? Why is he rooted to his line instead of coming and clearing Zuma out? If Swipe McNeil yeah. scores that goal, or even if we just hold on for one nil, basically, if we win the game, mm. and even if Brighton's gone because we should have won that, like Ped, Ped you said, yeah, 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 the game, you know, three points on Saturday, yeah. even then, the table with those four points back, it looks mm. pretty. Mm. In context, right? yeah, yeah. make sure it's in context, but pretty good. Yeah, and then mm-hmm. you're looking forward, and your whole mood changes. Yeah, your whole yeah, weekend yeah, yeah. changes. You're not because I was. I then got to the gig I was doing in Leeds, and I was checking on the Luton Villa score. Yeah. Like, oh, Villa had tuned up, and like, oh, Luton have scored. Why? Why is this affecting my? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That Luton have put a little spurt of like twenty minutes of good play together, mm. and it's making me day rubbish. <laughs> it is. It is mad, isn't it? No, when you like realistically, like when you just step, I know we can't step back because we're all in it, and we all act like, well, I'll speak for myself, act like a dickhead at times over Everton, because it just affects you so much. It's like, it's eleven, well, it's twenty millionaires having a game of footy on a pitch, you know, and and another twenty millionaires on the opposition side, all in a squad, and we go and we just watch it, and that's all it is. It's not, it's not life or death affecting. It's you go and it's a game of footy, but. It is. It's like how is how is Luton equalising? Like, just pissed me off so much. You know what I mean? And well, then, like, yeah. luckily, like the score, Villa score, God. You know when you like watch like American TV shows and sitcoms and stuff, and they talk about like, oh, the Yankees lost again or whatever, uh, yeah. whatever team it is. Yeah. And maybe I'm doing them with the service, but I always think you can dip in and out of that. That mm. doesn't feel like. And again, if any Americans watching, you might say, "Look, you're totally wrong there," but mm. that. And maybe that's the way it's presented on these shows. But yeah. I always feel like I wish I could just. I'm watching the game. The game finishes. I turn mm. the telly off. Yeah. And I think whenever it win, and they're even mid table, I think you can do that to to a degree. Although then I just get really wrapped up in the the optimism of the fact that oh, who's up next. And yeah, yeah, it's yeah. So it's so in, like intrinsically woven into who we are. It's part of our personality, isn't it? And it's part of our like like I talked about like the family history. Mm. And if somebody could offer me 
a hypnosis that would remove <laughs> Evertonian mm. elements from my brain. Yeah. I, I don't think I'd do it because I think I need I still, You need yeah. it. It's everything Part I still need it. Let me just say this though, Sam, right? If you did if you were a baseball fan and you did feel the same way, right? They play 162 games in a yeah, season. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> many? Yeah, imagine, imagine how miserable your oh life would God. be. Oh, oh my God. That's terrible. 100, that's before they get to the playoffs, I think. Do oh, they have fan channels like this? They because can. How do you do, like, I know. match reactions for that? The match just reaction. like your match reaction is just a phone in your face like that yeah. and then upload it and then right preview you know? yeah. you've never got a second want, to even like, digest it that's why yeah that's why base, baseball is what did they call it? America's pastime because mm. it can't be anything else than a bloody pastime you'd be dead that's why they love NFL and it's like, like even, 12 games yeah but even the basketball is like 84 games yeah. or 88 games or whatever if you play every three days it's like oh they're here on the, 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 in fact that's a lie they play every other day in some weeks They'll get the here, then the, the fly in there. Imagine it. No, oh, oh, but then maybe you desensitise a bit to it. Or would you? I don't know. I don't know. It is horrible, isn't it? It is because I would. I would give honestly. I would love to just that whistle have gone on Saturday, and me stand up in my seat, walk out to Goodison, and just think, oh well, it's a game of footy. I'd love that. And then that that was it. You know what I mean? Like. You come out of it, yeah, I don't know, if you go and see a show or you watch a film or something, and you mm. just go, oh, that was good, that, or yeah. oh, I was a bit crap, that, wasn't it? And then you don't really give it a second thought. You get, I'd look, I'd, honestly, Sam, I'm different from you there. I think I'd need that men in black thing if they could mm. just take the emotion away from results for me. I think my life would be so much better. I still feel sick today that Everton have yeah, been yeah. done at home. And yet I had a little reprieve yesterday. As my lad scored a 30 yard free kick, tremendous free. And watching them was like, this is joy. This is like football, that's great. Mm. And then I come home, and then I'm going, I'll be in getting on. And yeah, it, you're yeah. back on it, you're back on it, and then they get beat, and then you're going, oh, for fuck's sake, City are getting beat by, mm. oh, God, Liverpool. No, and then City, when you're like, oh. And, yeah, and I don't want that. I don't want to give a no. shit about Man City or Liverpool. I just want to go. You just want to find a little corner of happiness, don't you? I just also have <laughs> That's all it is, isn't it? it is. I, just, I don't know how to do it. No, I don't. I don't I, know how to I'll just go. Right, Everton got beat. All right, who do we play next See, week? And let's I think Sam's it. got it easy because going to a gig, it's it's rehearsed and you're bringing joy to somebody else's life. Yeah, but if his brain's gone. Oh, no, but oh, oh, hell, I didn't pick for Cumber the Cross. Hear me out. When I was on the cabs, <laughs> when I was on the cabs, you're talking two hours after a game, I would be I'd be working and you got I'm taking people into town. I, I'm not being funny. People are saying, put him, put you know, put it, put juice on or put Radio City on or whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, lad, I'm listening to the arches. Fuck off. Uh, that's the language, <laughs> Timothy. <laughs> I'm sitting there going, no, lad, I'm listening to uh, I'm listening to a podcast about death, all right, and that's the end of it. That is the end of it. That lad. is happier than ever yeah, at the moment. Because that is the happiest I've been all day, lad. So pipe down in the back there. That's so just... What, go on, Sam. About, you come out the ground, right? You come out the ground, Everton have had a, a disappointing result. You come out, you walk Again. down Goodison Road, you go past the hot walk, and yeah. then there's a little gazebo, and you go inside, and it's like some kind of... like Basically, Yori Geller stood there, and mm. he just does some mad thing with oh, his oh, on the head. It's yeah. it on the head, yeah. That'd be and great. That would be great. And you just go, ah, oh, they go... I would, I, I, you see, I talk to some people, <laughs> yeah. and honestly... It's like some people look like they're ready to jump off the bullens yeah. with like not, not stop themselves, like tie their hands and go, I'm hitting the <laughs> floor means, like, and I don't care, yeah. right? And other people are like, oh, well, we got beat, right? I'm going for it. And I'm like, oh, I'd love to be like you. I would love to just go, it doesn't touch the sides. You know, like, I'd love my brain to be like a wizard sleeve, you know mm. what I mean? It just doesn't <laughs> touch the side. <laughs> that reference, on yeah. Your, on your Gladys Street reaction from Saturday, Ped, where you know you do the little montage of like, yeah. from your seat and at the final whistle or just after the final whistle and obviously the the, the sounds are very Goodison esque yeah mm. and it's almost like what's that is it as astm what's that thing asmr asmr mm. it's like Goodison asmr yeah. because I think if you know the great beyond when we're all yeah. no longer here that would be a great connection back to this life mm. which is just. There was about three voices. Yeah. One just kept. One of them might have been yours. I don't know. No, but no. He was screaming and screaming, and it was so end of a bad game of yeah. No, I, was, listen, my, I, I, you know, a lot of people mightn't like that, but I, I feel like I am, I am the time capsule for yeah. Gutherson Park. I feel like you know when, 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 when we've left Gutherson and 
you know, the, the handing out all the uh, the bits and bobs that we're all paying 75 quid for, you should open the box, and that's the noise you should hear when you open the box. <laughs> I want to be like one, yeah. one when we've won yeah. and you're there grand all, and everyone's singing yeah. and the other ones should I be I haven't got a gramophone no but Sorry. if there was three if there was three options like you know or two a win and then yeah. a, a defeat and then the defeat is just to remind you yeah. of what it could be like just the, yeah just <laughs> put it down <laughs> just press one for booze press yeah, two for you're the... a ginger what press three for yeah, but what the I mean really you're not fit to wear the shit you can say it but it, this is just evidence of a fan base that has put up with absolute nonsense for years and it is it is nonsense it we're still putting up with it now and people are making excuses for it and i'm still here and we are excuse fc it was the points like it's it's not the manager it's it's we're unlucky it's xg it's the play it's everything but I made all the excuses all of it but we have got to just start winning yeah, games yeah. and all the excuses need to be yeah. put away and we have to grow up and win the games of football. that are made for the manager and for the team are just unbelievable. Not being funny, right? When James Garner gets two opportunities to put a corner in the box when you're two one no. down, you know he takes the first one and and the ref stops it and and then he gets the he does literally it was like the Matrix. It was like knowing you see the black cat and they go, oh, that's deja vu. Well, there's no such thing, and they that's what it was like on Saturday mm. second corner, and they go up the end and score. So it gets the ball back though. That's what I'm what's saying. worse is. The second ball comes in and it goes back to him and he could cross it and he doesn't. He waits and waits and then just decides to put Yara yeah. Bowen through. Yeah. It was just so weird. Nice. So weird. But listen, Man United away, nice easy yeah. one at the weekend. Although, to be honest, Evan, the good away. So I would look at Old yeah. Trafford and go, these aren't great. Is, is there any uh, value in a conversation about Everton being the first professional football team to have different coaches for home games? I think so. Away games. Like, mm. in American football, don't they have, like, uh, well, I suppose they have that in football as well, attacking coach, mm. defensive coach. Yeah, yeah. But they should they take the team team for them games. Like, like, that, you'd always team. want no, Dice away. They, you'd literally, always want they like. literally have two different teams, don't they? Mm. Like, a team, a defensive team and an offensive yeah, team. Yeah, but you'd always want Dice away. Because he knows what he's doing mm-hmm. away at home, it's difficult because we need to. We're just not. We don't yeah, attack yeah. enough, and it's so scattergun the approach. Yeah. Even Saturday, we've ended up, and you look at it and go, "Oh, they had twenty shots or something." Mm-hmm. Actually, watch the the things. It's so scattergun. There's no yeah, build no up pattern. anywhere. There's no patterns. No patterns. And there was no. Pa- and to be fair, there's no patterns under Lampard either, no, and there's no. no patterns under Benitez. There's got to be someone who they bring in, maybe Dice brings an attacking coach in. Who just works on that? Because that isn't. You are putting your hand up. No, but you're not putting your hand up. Going, I'm no good at that. Because quite clearly, defensive structure yeah, he is yeah. very good at. So bring someone in to help you. Bring someone mm. in who's creative, and because we need some idea. Yeah. Don't we? But it's just dreadful. <sighs> Let's just. I just want to talk about Sam's top trump snakes. <laughs> okay. I mean, to reach for the pack. There needs to be a bit of context there before yeah. we. Recorded. Sam sounded like he'd been electrocuted. Yeah. So we we inquired after his mm. well-being. Yeah. To which he replied, "It was his snake. Mm. Um, his, sorry, his packet of top Trump snakes, yeah, yeah. which needs to be investigated a bit more." Can't lie. Let me just point that out. No, I, I, I don't. Well, don't you can that, say yeah. that, but there's no evidence to prove that. But uh, oh, first, first card, Nick Barnby. <laughs> okay. See, classic. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> but if it, I mean, do you have any young? I mean, these were a staple of the playground when we were we were kids, man. They well, they're obviously coming back because Sam. You know, and if anyone doesn't know, basically, it's a pack of cards where you get what you get different different things in de- if different packs, mm. different versions of different things: snakes, trucks, footballers. I don't know whatever else, and you just compare them. Now, he, Sam's got a pack of snakes. I, I first of all, I want to know who went round. And checked all of these snakes, mm, their abilities, their abilities, mm. and you know decided who was going to give. Well, so I mean, just pull it. I pull mean, a, Sam, give pull, pull a, a card, card out and give us not only the type of snake you've pulled out, but also the the sort of abilities of it. I guess the call. Okay. So this one's called Russell's Viper, which in light okay. of recent news stories yeah. might have uh, yeah. different connotations. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. That's not. Uh, that, yeah, mm-hmm. move on. Yeah. Uh, there's a better one. There's one here called, if I can find it, it's called Boom Slang. Okay. Which I think is is a word that we should be using. Didn't he, he, play, for, didn't he play for Newcastle and Rangers? <laughs> was, he was on uh, John Elaine Boom Slang. Came from, uh, yeah, he's come from PSV. Uh-huh. Uh, but I'm looking at him. Yeah, go on, so mate. I've got average size. 
160 centimeters. Okay. I've got average offspring. Okay. 20. Okay. Temper one, so he's quite placid. So he's placid. Okay. The boom shank is placid. Yeah. He's quite a friendly little chap. Friendly little. Venom score 39, and then top trumps rate. Top trumps rating 86. So out of a, so it's out of a hundred, isn't it generally? I think I think some of them are out of hundred. I think some of them are out of five. It's very confusing, so you don't really know what you. Well, go on. They get a diff. I mean, that seems, seems very much like the Premier League rules. Um, <laughs> get another another one, Sam. Pull us yeah, another the snake. King Cobra. Oh, oh, that. he big, sounds big menacing. Classic. Oh, big yeah, snake. he sounds menacing. Uh, he's got he's got temper one again. Quite placid. Really I'm saying that uh, one? Yeah. Are we? Have, oh, we? have we got this the wrong way? I now? think we might have this the wrong. I reckon one he's in the angry. top one bracket. Cobras are bastards. Yeah. Well, hang on. East, Eastern Green Mamba is also Tempo 1. Yeah. The Banded Sea Crate, Tempo 1. Have you just... very placid. If they are, if they're a placid... Oh, are you reading them wrong? Yeah. Am, am, I, am I Snake Lexi? I think maybe. <laughs> Snakes are kind of all right if you just don't bother them. Yeah, if you just... Okay. Them, if you don't pick them with a stick, mm. yeah. they're generally sound. Or if you don't kidnap them, they're genuinely them. sound, though. Well, they're not like... Snakes aren't going round knocking... Like having pub fights, are they? Well, that, I don't know. I've never been in a snake pub. Who knows? Any pub? Well, they don't. Yeah, but that's, they're not turning up, are they? Well, they're not going into, why would they want to go into pubs? Because that's, <laughs> that's where a lot of knobheads go. Yeah, but why would the snakes want to go in there? Cause I'm sure the heads. snakes sat around doing a snake cast, going, humans are all right. They're not turning up into our swamp, are our they? jungle. You know, in our jungle having a go. Oh, there was Planet Earth. Is it Planet Earth today that's just been on with, with, with David Attenborough? And there was like a, a a village in India where the snake's just a part of the culture. Yeah, that meant, yeah, yeah. And there's just like these killer snakes and they don't they don't bother anyone. Yeah, they're just they like, now. we don't, we leave them. We're, they treat yeah, yeah. them like dead sand. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. The snakes are like, why would we bite them? These are sand fellas. Mm, that's fine. You know and women. I mean? Could be a woman. And, and women, yeah. Mm. These are sand. Let us in the pub. No Let us in the pub. There's no, no messing. messing. Yeah. You know, no. their own top trumps. There you yeah, go. Yeah. No one's checking IDs on the door. I did, I did have a game of top trumps with me some once where a couple of packs that got mixed together. So he had snakes and I had some monster truck. I was trying to. That, <laughs> that, that, I mean, that, that being funny. That's the battle you want to see. That's that's a film ready to monster trucks versus snakes is a film ready to be made, <laughs> isn't it? Let's be honest. That's what we all did want to see. Did you have any top trumps as a kid then? Did you have any I had, packs? I had, yeah, I think I had like, um, like, uh, the best cars. Yeah, I was going to say, like, cars were the traditional yeah. one, wasn't it? Like, oh, unbelievable, like, just like unbelievable cars. Like, speeds and yeah. all of that. Like, how you, it was, it was a bit confusing though, wasn't it? Because you just choose your, we'll choose speed on this one, knowing <laughs> you had like, <laughs> yeah. friggin' Lamborghini or something. I, no, that's not mini- how you played it. It was general, it was all of them, wasn't no. it? No. Yeah. There, was there was ways, wasn't there? Yeah. Maybe. Well, there was. I just don't. Own. Yeah, I think you just made. Well, it. you made your own top drums. How no poor, in- how poor in- you were. It's like we made our own. We oh. just had, we just had stones and we compared stones. How grey is your stone? Nine. Well, mine's ten. Fuck off. I we don't think poor. Sam talks like that. To be fair, no, that's how they. When I'm poor, they work. Yeah. Oh, we okay. yeah. get our top drums. We butter some lard on it and then we beat it. <laughs> yeah. It'll be our yeah, like, the more the poor you are, the more northern you are. Oh, Everyone okay. knows that. Okay. That's the general Apparently, rule. Apparently, it's not the rule. It's not the top trumps rule, that's is it? Top trumps rule. You do it yeah. through the country where you are. Pawners. <laughs> One. Yeah. All of that. But it what? says in wealth top trumps. It's like, yeah. How sudden are you? You're very rich if you are. <laughs> You're very sudden. What are you? One or ten? Well, that's, it's that's just, fair. Just because it's a classification level, isn't it? That's, again, classification. Well, so, really. Talking of Northern Ooh. and shite and stuff like that, Sam, have you seen the... I'm sure you have because everyone's seen it and I don't know whether you've even put it in one of your shows. Who knows? But the this Glasgow Willy Wonka experience, which is uh, being called a farce, are you aware of this? I am aware of it. Yeah. It, it, it was amazing. And uh, to anyone who says, oh, the poor kids and parents who went, mm-hmm. you're lying to yourself because... Every single one of us loves these stories. And they come yeah. out, don't they, every now and again? But normally it's Christmas. You only mm. get them at Christmas yeah. normally. And it's like Santa Land in Milton Keynes. <laughs> and some fella with ginger ears pretending to be Father Christmas. No offence, Ped. But no, it doesn't work, fine. does it? And he's smoking rollies and yeah. he stinks of Vosine. And he's got... Vosine? You've got, 
Rudolph, who's like a wheelie bin with a you know red nose stuck to the front, and and all the kids look dead upset, and everyone's going, "This is brilliant." This was in February, so we were treated to this, and yeah. it looked. Um, it, I mean, I wish it was still open because yeah. I'd go. I'd go I would people. go. What I love is if you like AI for the poster. The posters, <laughs> the posters, are incredible. But the, but the, I would want to go to the poster. But the actual place, the actual place looks where looks like where where in uh, Reservoir Dogs where they had the busy and they cut his ear off. <laughs> That's what it looks it like. It was built. <laughs> it was built as a celebration of chocolate in all its delightful forms. But, <laughs> but it ended up a tragic tale worthy of a an, tragic tale of a, worthy of an Oompa Loompa song. I just love that it was in Glasgow. It's because... it's police were called to a venue in Glasgow you after you furious families called so, them. Where are we going? We're going to the Wanker Experience. We're going to the Wanker Experience. Are you going where? Wanker Experience. Mm. Like, it sounds... If you're in Glasgow and you're going to the Wanker Experience, mm. straight off the bat, I think there's a problem there. I think they got lo- the location wrong straight from the from the off. Well, the house of... Al- the the organiser, the house of Illuminati. I mean, if that doesn't get your... <laughs> if that isn't getting you thinking, hang on, what's happening here? It was... He was talking about that <laughs> <you know, laughs> the <laughs> Maybe he'd been done. Maybe he'd He's seen the it. wanker. Uh, 35 pound the Dead. tickets yeah. for an immersive experience yep. based on the film. And the best thing about it is the event publicity promised giant mushrooms, candy canes, and chocolate fountains with special audio and visual effect, all narrated by dancing Oompa Loompas or the Oompa Loompas. The best thing is, maybe what they thought was, if we just give everyone a giant mushroom on the way in, then it would it would look like a, the Wonka experience. That would do You wouldn't need anything else. The best thing is the children were offered half a cup of lemonade yeah. and a, and a, and, a, and some jelly beans, so they never actually got any chocolate. No, the only thing that what happened was the girl had been given one bag of jelly beans to share, <laughs> so she started off apparently with like half a cup of jelly beans as well, but realised she was gonna run out of jelly beans. So in the end, they ended up getting two jelly beans and a quarter <laughs> cup of lemonade. That's how bad it went. Would have been swearing as ever. Yeah, they'd have been fuming. Going, this, uh, this is bollocks. Yeah. The script, the script apparently was written by AI, and the villain was called the Unknown, who was an evil rival chocolate maker who lives in walls, like, like damp. <laughs> who lives in walls? Who make ice cream or like walls damp. as just like damp? That's it. It's it. Uh, oh my god. Yeah. Well. It only was, Britain, think, only Britain in it. Somebody said it was like a, it was like a meth lab. I think that's how they just it, which is like, <laughs> imagine scrolling through the TripAdvisor comments and you just see that. You're like, well, to be honest, that does sound not dissimilar from the book and the mm. two films, does it? Because yeah. they are just, it's just a bit of a mad place. But if Willy Wonka looks like Rab C. Nesbitt, I think you can probably ask for your money back. I think that's probably one of the rules, isn't it? It is absolutely crazy. The oh, girl's God. face was incredible, the one he was working there. Someone took a picture. But it's the, they've literally just gone into a warehouse. They've put a picture. Mm. I mean, look at that. Yeah, They've just picture, put like a little, little picture, picture on so a big wall. It's essentially British, though. Oh, it? it's it just... is so quint. You know what I mean? Like, it's it is absolutely so, it's like, and I, remember, I remember, like, this happened years ago with Mr. Blobby, Blobby Land in Morecambe, and it was like the same. It was like people were going in saying they'd been ripped off and everything. Noel Edmonds just at the back counting the money while kids are getting half a cup of lemo. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's absolutely crazy, isn't it? It's so British. That, that's, that's, what, that's literally what's great about our country, I think. Things like that. that. What we just set up. We are the People country go, of like I know what we'll do. No, we are the country of like bad scams, aren't we? We've literally just get scammed every day of well, our lives. House of Illuminati apparently had done a Christmas thing where they got local businesses to donate everything, but and they were gonna have an event. Is it the government? And they were gonna have an event where they handed it out to to like children, like underprivileged children, and they had to cancel the event, but they never. You never done anything with the money back. That's well, like a guy I used stuff. to work with. We, he was leaving, and we all had a collection. We got him about two hundred quid, mm. and then like the day he was leaving, they offered him a new contract, and he stayed. <laughs> and we were like, "Well, can we have our five quid back?" <laughs> two years ago, we were all skinny. <laughs> there he is. There's the fella you got. Like, and now like, he's charging yeah, thirty-five yeah, quid yeah. for <laughs> Willy Wonka, and he lives in the head as well. What's mad but, is it? They actually did a, a sketch on Saturday Night Live about it. It's that's I, I need to watch that just to see the Scottish that accent. Is. If it's wow. anywhere as good, as, we'll put it this way, Baz. Me and you've both seen the Harry Potter sketch they did, and um, yeah, Sydney Sweeney was on this week's Saturday Night Live. So I think 
we might be watching that just to see. Well, just to see they bring it. in. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Very. But a company with the name the House of Illuminati. Yeah, yeah. You'd Expect them to be trustworthy. Yeah, I, I would. I, I, I would. Yeah. I think you're right. Lawrence Fox there at the front with the uh, an ex Liverpool and Southampton <laughs> player. Pick one. Could be, pick one. Pick yeah. one. Could be a rebel. Not saying it. Not saying the no, name. Not, just saying pick no, one. Of course. Um, Sam asked us to. It, it, it's suggestions for this, mm-hmm. right? And I'm rubbish at things like Hollywood biopics. Oh yeah, right. So I don't know whether to keep this for next week. Save it for next week. Thought, but we'll the second one we will do because yeah, that's on. a good one. So what are like simple pleasures? That's okay. Sam's question. Not holidays, etc. But just mm. things like you make yourself a cup of tea, you forget about it, and then yeah. you see it, and you're like, oh my god, I've got a drink. Because because everyone gets hung up on the yeah, big things, don't they? When yeah. they're trying to be happy and 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 healthy. Is and, there like, anything? Oh. Is there anything more? Upsetting though mm. than thinking you've, you've still got, got your brute. To... Oh. Oh. And you turn. It's the Everton, and isn't you go... it? You've gone full oh. Everton there. You've just turned a good thing into a negative. No, no, because we'll go back oh. to the good thing. But I'm just thinking, you know, if like. Anchor. You think, yeah, exactly. You think you're watching something and you're, you're immersed in it, unlike the Wonka, mm. you know, the Illuminati bit. And you think, I'll stop a brute. And you reach over and it's yeah. and you go, oh my but God. On that same line, when you've got like, we, we get these, uh, these. These fruit bars from Aldi and there's three biscuits mm. in the pack. Someone's doing you well. Eat one, you eat the second, then you eat the third. But that's the order. I yeah. eat them in, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> you just, stuff. Yeah. But sometimes I think I've got one left and I reach for the third one. And I've already eaten it, but mm. I've eaten it mindlessly. Yeah. So I didn't even remember Savory. eating it. And it's it's heartbreaking to bits. Why are we it's turning this close. into a negative? Yeah. But let's go positive. Well, if we're going to say Sorry. negative, I'll turn the last negative, the cup of tea that you realise. And it's cold, cold. Oh, oh. yeah. Straight Some people the... say microwave it. I like... microwave it. No, but, but, you, you... but I microwave socks, so. Fair. <laughs> Do you? My... What are you? Have you ever had a situation no, where, no, you, where no, you're down no. to your last pair of socks? No. And they're sitting there on the, and they're drying, and you're halfway out the door, and you're like. Why are you halfway out the no, door you know, with no socks know, on? You know what this I mean? This sounds like Ned. No, you're halfway out the door, and you're like, I need those socks pronto. What can I do? <laughs> It's two minutes in the microwave. Ding! You stick them on your feet. Not only have you got socks. Ding! Not only have you got. Hang on. Not only have you got dry dry socks. You've got warm socks. Oh, so a microwave drives you. Drives you. Yeah. Yeah. With the heat. Fair play. Simple pleasure. Or or the other or another simple pleasure is again in a similar way. It's a cold day. It's a wet day. You've been out the day before. You've had your gloves on. They're on Mm. the radiator. You're about to go to the door again. You say, I need my gloves. And you realise they are still on that radiator. You put them on and they are warm and toasty. Yeah, the radiator is warm and toasty. Pleasure. That's a pleasure. That's, That's a simple, simple pleasure. pleasure. Toasty bills. The toasty, radiator, toasty the bills. There you go. TBs. T- the TBs. The TBs, yeah. Where's well, the me TBs? <laughs> well, what else, have, what, what else are you thinking of, Sam? Is that, uh, for well, I, I mean, those lovely little pleasures. Go ahead. But I think watching a complete stranger in the street standing dog muck is... Joyful, it's joyful. It is really it? Is jo- what about what about a human element to this? Oh, what about so a funny. complete stranger just falling over in the street? Is there oh, not a no, is there not a joke to that? Or, or, or yeah, there's a better one for you. If there's ever like there's a patch of ice that you know about and no, you just sit and watch. No, because that hurts. <laughs> that hurts. See, you're that's that's bordering on evil. Where Sam's yeah. Sam's is like is a real genuine delight. What what watching someone standing dog shit? No, we saw that it's cup of tea one, making a brew and forgetting about one. it. That's no, perfect. Back there. No, but that's pe- that's like that is what he means. Mm. That kind of thing. Oh, he's the one who said it, not me. What are you having a go at me for? Because you you've took it to a darker level. I haven't took it. Dark. <laughs> you know? It's a pleasure. With- I ship. It's not a pleasure yeah. thing. I don't find people falling over funny. No, okay. I do. Oh, well, that's you, yeah. isn't it? But then again, I watch. I I really enjoy uh, air, air traffic disaster, disaster investigation shows. So, do you know what I mean? Because you've always got to be prepared. Your life is. That, I watched the twenty that's... minute video on YouTube today because they said you might have found a little bit of joy on uh, MH370 on the plane crash. I thought that was that was exceptional bit of joy. Give me the link. Please. What was the joy? Uh, some Australian may have found a, a wing. But then lost. But then lost it again. <laughs> no. He found the wing and then lost it. How did you lose a plane? He wing? said he the was massive. He was a fisherman, and he said he was pulling. He pulled his net up from like the bottom, and he said there was a wing there. And he said, but the problem was it was so heavy that if I didn't let it go, I was gonna, like the boat was going to tip over or something. And um, 
you know. Sounds legit to me. So surely, <laughs> the, <laughs> surely they go to where he was then, and actually, well, they won't. They won't come out and um, they won't come out and 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 they said the. That's basically what the doc, the twenty minute piece was about. Was like that they won't come out and spend any more money on it on it because if they find it, basically they'd have to pay out insurance. This has had the joyful twist, hasn't it? <laughs> well, I wonder who brought it. We were on a cup of tea that you'd sort of forgot, and it's still it's still at a good level yeah, to drink, yeah. and that does bring you joy. Can I throw another positive one go in on, there? Go on. on planes, but without plane crashes. When you're on a plane, it's only happened to me once, and you get the two seats next to you empty for like a long journey. So you've got the... You can lie down. People but then, say it's comfy. It's not, but, but the it's only, comfier than sitting up. The only problem with that is that means you're on your own on the plane, doesn't it? Which is another joy. It's a joy. It sounds like a joy somewhere. That's that sounds like a joy for Sam. He sounds quite happy. Sam no. seems quite happy with that. Well, I always find them a little treat. The solitude, isn't it? Um, and the two different things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'd, I'd, I'd say it. I'd say definitely one, and I've mentioned it many a times. It's when you bite into a Kit Kat and it's all chocolate. That's that is oh. it. See, that's that is the dream. That's heavenly. That's the dream. You get the full solid chocolate there Would because. You... Because Kit Kats are nice, yeah. and you know that they're nice, and you'd accept the mm. wafer middle. Yeah. But you bite into it, and if it's solid. And it's weird because you could have chosen to bite into a full chocolate bar, but there's something about it. It's the surprise, It's element, the surprise, yeah. The expectations. Man, yeah. The expectations over deliver. Mm. So what you've done is you've tricked your own mouth into thinking you're getting a, a thing, mm-hmm. and then you've got something way better. Yeah. Well, it's not how to live life. That's that's that's, that's the. Should all manage expectations really low. Yeah. Just tell people, I'm going to be there, you know, at a certain time, and then get there ten minutes early. This is but, yeah, but this is it. what's happened with Everton, isn't it? Our expectations were low, but we me we didn't think they were that low. Uh, mm-hmm. That we've been managing our expectations for years, and the fact that we're so miserable now shows how bad it is. That's true. Yeah, I mean, I don't know where to how to bring this back. <laughs> we keep coming back. The, the full chocolate Every time was a good we one. throw joy, we just can't f- help but find misery in the joy. And I think <laughs> nothing says Evertonian than find the misery in a bit of joy. Can we have a bit of joy to see if we can hold on to that bit of joy? Mm? I don't know. I don't know what that means. Quite literally. What about driving down the motorway, right? Yeah. Late at night. And then... You get to a little section where the road's just been tarmacked and oh. it's suddenly very smooth. Oh, nice. the quiet smoothness. Oh, it's quiet and it's yeah. like, and it only lasts sometimes for a quarter of a mile, but yeah. what a quarter of a mile that is. How horrible is it on a... Again, going oh. back to the negative. <laughs> <laughs> but how horrible is it when you're driving on, like the motorway, yeah. and you're, you know them sections? There's one on the M56 mm. going, if you go over, like, the, the bridge... Rumble. And then you're coming towards oh, yeah. Edinburgh, Wales. You hit a bit towards the end of that, yeah. where it duck, it dips down yeah. before you hit Wales, where the sections are concrete. You just hit that. Bum, 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 bum. Every like yeah. you know, you're hitting yeah. like a section of the road, and then you hit the fresh tarmac, yeah. and then it goes quiet again. And you think that's incredible. No, it, and you know what another on. one is, and it's just remember. And again, it's negative, yeah, yeah. but it's it's got to be a positive for me because I've got to do something positive about it. Friggin' wiper blades on your car. Mine have started that, you know, that scratch. Hang on, I've, not been, scratching, I've been in rubbery. your car with, yeah, the not wipe, in this one. with the wiper blades. I've literally, every time they've gone across your windscreen, I've took glass off. Yeah, that was on me. Like, like literally, yeah, like, I went glass, and got new ones. The windscreen is now about an, uh, a millimetre thick because every time I go, you just see, you see a sheet of glass go I off. Got them like, people are like diving out the way of big sheets of glass. I got them changed, didn't I, after that? <laughs> No, this isn't that bad. This is the bit in between yeah. it like bounces the rubber so you know that it's not smooth. Yeah. I need to So the joy for me yeah. will be well, little joy, but replace them. Not little joy. Is it? Was that little joy? Anti- she antique fellas. She like like kill joy. Kill okay. joy. <laughs> Love joy. That was it. Love joy. Man. Kill joy. <laughs> kill joy. I never told me. Silk joy. What? No. Silk joy. I was thinking of kill Roy. <laughs> kill, kill Roy <laughs> Silk joy. Kill Roy, kill Roy <laughs> Silk joy. What? What about you? Here's one, which is weird. But it, some people might find joy in it. When you look, when you look at your your instruments and you just see what instruments you're on your car, oh, on your car. Yeah, okay. Not to know when you be like looking at your double bass in your bedroom or your trombone. Go ahead, leave my double bass alone. Um, and you look at your instrumentation, yeah, and you just see 
you as it ticks over and just hits a, like a threshold, like five thousand miles. Yeah, that is. Oh, that, that is joy. In, there's there's, a, there's joy, a satisfaction. There's a joy in that. There's a satisfaction. Yeah, but there's in a that. sadness when you know it's coming and then you completely forget about and it. You miss it. And you look back. And it's a mile. Yeah, that's. No, I'm with you on that. That's. <laughs> I'm with you on that. So it's like you're looking one. at the roads. Yeah. Well, you just as you're supposed to be. For some reason, you're trying to dodge bits of my windscreen <laughs> on on <laughs> sex, sections of road. There's a great bit on the M60, my favourite piece of road in this whole country. I do a lot of driving. Motorway chats on the 1870, on the, on the sponsored M60, by RAC. By the Trafford yeah. Centre, yeah. where, I don't know if it's the two bits of the road joining, but as you drive over it, it kind of goes... Doo, 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 yeah. doo. So and like he's like 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 the Terminator. The mothership. Oh, the mothership. Oh, wonderful. i tell you what, next, next week on the podcast, we'll be discussing our favourites. Uh, favorite stops on motivation. Yeah, say, service stations. Have you got a favorite? No, I've we'll got save one. that. We'll, we'll save it. Oh, I we'll have. Save Ironically, I've got save a favorite that. one. Save but, um, and I've got my worst ones as well. If you oh. want to keep it negative. Oh well. Yeah. Hey, listen. Hey, <laughs> we we encompass it all here. Mm. We can have a top three. You, yeah, a top three service stations. Have you ever seen a? Have you ever seen a, a, a an ex royal butler in any of these service stations? I'm just so I know where to avoid. I don't think I have. No, okay. but uh, the search continues. Leave it there. Okay, I'll ask you that once we've stopped recording. No, no, I'm not sure what that reference is, but there you go. There you go. And you know what you should bring me, Joy, and it doesn't anymore? Yeah. I just looked at the shape behind you, and the yak used to score oh, for us yak. on DDL. Yeah. That oh, brought me lots of unbelievable, joy. Unbelievable. It was know. unbelievable. It was unbelievable. What a In fact, the car hit, yeah. yeah. Just bringing it back to a negative, we don't have these anymore, Evan but they did bring, bring joy you. anymore, do they? That hard, what it? could they do to bring joy without buy, winning a buy, trophy? Buy good players that make me happy. Okay. Buy players that I go. What about I just like winning you? some games? That'd be a start. Yeah, but that'd be a start. But buying some players like like entertainers, like you just go. This I like this fella. Hamas Rodriguez was the last one mm. who you just went. Like what a this. player! I like this fella. Mm. I've got a bit of that with Branthwaite. No, oh, yeah, 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 but, yeah, no, but Branthwaite I appreciate and I like him. And he's a fine yeah. player. He doesn't really bring me joy though. Like no. just seeing a fella turn someone inside out and just being standing up and going, "You're amazing, dude. Yeah. You can do that." Or banging one mate. in the top, and then yeah, and just smash him on him effortlessly. Mm. Remember, oh. That would be lovely, that wouldn't yeah. it? Brant- it would. Brant- when I watch Brantwaite right, though, he is like a pigeon amongst peacocks, or the, no, a peacock amongst pigeons. <laughs> I've got to say, he's what? Haven't you got yeah, that? That all made aren't? Yeah, that's that's definitely. Made definitely aren't. Yeah, even if you like pigeons, that's yeah, pigeons are plot. Pigeons are shite, aren't they? What's well, it's government spies, aren't they? Government spies. <laughs> <laughs> Illuminati. <laughs> Imagine. Who is the pigeons? <laughs> Wanker! <laughs> the pigeons <laughs> designed it. <laughs> pigeons are behind everything, aren't they? Apparently so. Um, Letitia, Lawrence Fox. I thought you weren't going to name people. No, that was the. No, you can mention Letitia. I just wasn't going to mention the ex Liverpool and Southampton striker, Ricky Lambert. Just wasn't going to mention him. But you've mentioned him. No, I just mentioned him in general, not in any. No, just as he did way. play. Well, that's factually correct. No, he did play for Liverpool. And he does Southampton. like going to the that, town hall in, in Liverpool. Okay. Not the town house, the town hall. Oh, okay. He might like the town house. He might I have don't more know. fun in the town I house. I don't know. Very clean. Very, very clean. Good, Good parking. parking. Good parking. And a garage over the road where you can get nutritional oh, value from. You, Sam, you surely have heard my townhouse story, haven't you? Surely. I it, haven't. Oh, it's the greatest Ned story in the townhouse. of all time. And I think we'll have to finish the podcast on this note very, very quickly. I'll just tell you, are you aware of what the townhouse is? Is it a pub? It's a swingers c- club in Birkenhead. Oh no! Oh, it's tremendous, mate. It honestly, well, I mean, honestly, I've never been. You're saying it like never it's, been, you've but been. go on Google and it's it's honestly it's complimented on its free parking and how clean it is. Mm. Which, if you're a swinger, is exactly what you want, isn't it? Well, of course. I'll tell you the story very, very quickly. The abridged version. When I was on the cabs, working on Uber, picked up in town. Young gentleman, two girls got in, and I was. They were like, the just the destination's already pre. So I'm driving them to Bacon. I'm like, I don't know where I'm going. We stop off at this garage over the road in Birkenhead and they come out and they've, but honestly, it's genuinely, they've got a bottle of Lucas Aid each, each and a power bar, you know, like an energy power bar. Yeah. And I'm like, this is weird. And the guy, they were all nice. The guy was like, do you want anything? And I was like, no, I'm all right, mate, thanks. I'd not long started. And uh, literally, so the chatting and they get out and they get one of the girls at this, like, dress on and straight away. As soon as I saw this dress, it was like, yeah, that's something that you would see on, uh, well, yeah. Just it was Porn a porn hub. It was a, it was basically being made out of rubber. Oh, and I okay. swear to God, okay. they both had their Lucas Aids in hand and their power bars, and he grabbed both of them by the hand, 
And also one of the girls had a massive dragon tattoo on her thigh, which is another giveaway, isn't it? And he grabbed both of them by, like, not even the hand, by the wrist, and he both turned around to both of them, and he went, are you ready for this? And they both just went, yes. And they literally, it was like, um, have you, do you remember uh, Smooth Criminal, the video, Michael Jackson, when the door opens to the club, and all you see is, like, white light and smoke? <laughs> like, a bit like stars in your eyes. Do you know what I mean? Tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be doing both of these. <laughs> and he literally, with so much purpose, stormed into this club, and I was just like... Wow, because it was Birkenhead. It's not even like it wasn't even like big time Birkenhead. It was like under a railway bridge Birkenhead. But this so like energy, like, energy, energy, energy. 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 Oh, I I it, it, it gets to you first. Yeah. Wow. Into it, and I literally wow. just went, "Oh my god, something must be going on." Got on Google, searched townhouse, and suddenly the energy power bars, the Lucas said, it all made sense. It all made, and but I mean. Honestly, it's one of the greatest stories ever, and I could I could add bits to if I wanted, but it doesn't need bits adding to it. No. It's such a simple story. It's like it's like honestly, it's like the, one of the st- greatest stories ever told because it's so <laughs> simple. The, Beautiful. The power bars, the Lucas Aid, the free parking, the cleanness of it all, the many levels, Milf Mondays. Honestly, this place has got it all. It's got it all. The townhouse, you need to do some research because there's so much content. Milf Mondays. Milf honestly, Mondays. It's a real thing. Mm. It's a real... It is. And there you go. What day do you reckon Ricky went? Oh, Dewey Tuesday. Mm. Possibly. Honestly, what a place. Possibly. What a place. It's incredible. On a Freaky place. Fridays <laughs> yeah. with Ricky Lambert and others. <laughs> Honestly, it could be any. You have many levels of it and different floors of different things. Mm. But all I know is that it's clean and it has good parking. And what else do you want from a swingers club? And like I said, the garage that sells power exactly. bars and Lucas Shade. You must stop energy. up. You must stop you must up know. Lucas You must you know. know. must know. Going to need your energy. energy shots. And your, your, you know, get your, they probably got those little turmeric and ginger shots in there yeah. as well in case you need that. There you go. Protein bars. Protein bars there. Happy and days. a couple of aspirin. There you go. Ask Michael Aspen. Just to keep you know, to, to, to get, it, get you ready, apparently. There you go. Let's leave it at what that. A, what a finish. Let's leave it at there. What that's a finish. That's a good positive way to finish. Said. That's what she said. Or, or which one? Which one of the two? Both Who them. knows? Both, Both of them, them, maybe. The girl there with the go. dragon tattoo. There you go. Fair play. Right, leave it there before we get into trouble. Right, thank you very much to Sam Avery uh, for joining us. Hopefully he'll be here next week as well when we will be discussing off. favourite. Um, service stations, service stations mm. and Sam's Great. West. Yeah. It's it's gonna be you, incredible. Let us know in, in the comments. Send us, have you ever seen a celebrity at a service station? Oh, that has to be discussed. Na, na, na. Why not? Why there not? Make sure you like, subscribe, give it a five star review, all of that stuff, and uh, we will see you later. Bye.